All right, you're welcome back to Good Afternoon Ghana. Now, let's get into the area of cybersecurity. I have Osei Bonsu Dixon, um, a lawyer, and he is also the chairman for Cyberex Africa. Did I get that right? Cyberex Cyber Africa. Cyberex. Okay, Cyberex. Cyberex Africa. Cyber -X Africa. Yes. Okay. You're welcome to the program. Oh, thank you so much. To you. I, I don't know, but since you're a lawyer, maybe you can tell us a, a bit about what I was discussing earlier. You no, I don't want to. You don't want to? Yes. <laughs> Is it because it's from the Mensha Palace? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm not, how do you call it? I think I should leave it for, 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 for okay. them to have well, a go I pass at it. it. To it. Anyway, yes. you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. So what is CyberX Africa? Okay, so, so mainly, I mean, before we get into CyberX, um, I am also the director for Security Governance Initiative at the Ministry of National Security. Okay. And in that regard, we are actually having um, the Security Governance Initiative 2022 week. In fact, this will be about the third consecutive um, week celebration of the SGI week. We'll look at cyber security okay. and cyber crime, maritime security, and then border um, security in Ghana, because that is a, one of the major, th or th uh, the, the trinity of areas that the Security Governance Initiative looks at. So, 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 so first you are yes. actually uh, the chairman for Cyber X Yes, Africa, that's an event. And then you are, that's the event. That's an event, yes. Okay, that's the event. Yes. Uh-huh, and you are the uh, Security Governance Initiative. That's director, yes. Director. Yes. Oh, yeah. I see, I okay. see. So the event will actually be Cyber X uh, yes. Africa. And you say it's a weekly? So, first and foremost, so the event itself is one of the short events that the Security Governance Initiative is party to. We're partnering with the organizers of that event to, how do you call it, uh, provide some input because we focus on cybersecurity also, which is a threat, an issue of national security significance. Uh -huh. I chair the planning committee of the event. So I hope you do understand it. Okay, I'm, yes. I'm trying to understand. Looks like the names are a lot in my head. It's getting oh, very, very simple. I mean, I'm just the director for security governance. Okay. And we're having an, a side event. There's an event in which we are party to. Okay. There are other parties. I mean, Metro TV, you guys have even covered these events. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. I, get, I, I think get in the fullness it. of time, as we have discussions, yeah. I mean, it will yeah, become yeah, clearer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think I get it. Okay, okay. so what is the, uh, first of all, give me a picture of how cyber security is looking like, um, especially in Ghana. Oh, okay. So, well, well I think like? that, how do you call it, um, on a number of levels. So, first, if you look in terms of Ghana, our readiness, you look at Ghana, our positioning in Africa. Ghana is rated by the ITU, the International Telecom Union, as number three in Africa. Um, number three after Mauritius, number one, and Tanzania, number two. And so in that respect, you would see that from the indices that they use to compute the Africa rankings, mm -hmm. Ghana is doing well, at least in that regard. Okay, so that the first thing one order. would look at there is maybe like legislation. We have comprehensive legislation enough to at least deal with the, um, how do you call it, the menace of cybercrime. We have the institutional architecture, mm -hmm. well settled now, you understand. And um, we also do have the technical capacity, at least in very good order. Otherwise, our rankings would not reflect the performance that we see, at least from the International Telecom Union. So in that respect, fine. But if you take the issue of cybersecurity, which has to do with how the country positions itself to be able to manacle maybe criminal activities in cyberspace, the most important thing that most people, I mean, journalists, for example, you'll be interested in, are to do with cyber crime itself, the activity that predisposes criminality, you know, in this space. And I would say that, I mean, all over the world, all over the world, the world is fast changing. There's a, there is a seismic shift towards digitization or digital transformation. You no longer use analog things. You're using most, I mean, a lot of things that you are using uh, very far advanced digital media. And all these things are susceptible to interference, unlawful interference, hacking, phishing, spoofing, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot to be concerned about and a reason to be worried, you understand? And that is why around the world, in the region, in Ghana, and any other place, 
the concern about uh, digital intrusion, people who on unnecessarily have migrated from the physical activity that we know, criminal activity, to digital activity is of deep concern now. So yeah. what, what is, is that why we have to design the Cyber Africa? Uh, is Cyber Africa, uh, we have, you did some last year, right? Perfect. How was it like? Okay, so it was excellent. I mean, and so let me just give you a little synopsis. I mean, maybe your intro would, have, would maybe look like, so what exactly maybe CyberX? So CyberX is, um, is a PPP, it's a private public event. So there are public persons that are involved or public entities that are involved and then also private entities. This is an area you can't have private or public alone. You have to have the duality. So you have the public because the, pub, the private sector owns the infrastructure the telecom infrastructure, the subsea cables, all those things yeah. are owned, not by any government, but by private uh, sector. The infrastructure for the internet is 90% owned by private sector. The media, whatever, they are largely hold, held by the private sector. And so you can't do much without the private sector. And you can't do much in investigative terms also without the private sector because they are the owners of those digital infrastructure that one is interested in. And when you come to the public sector, the public sector is relevant because the public sector aggregates the laws. They bring the laws, they enforce the laws, the enforcement authorities are also in the private sector, sorry, in the public sector. And in that respect, there is that kind of symbiosis that one needs. So that is it. So this event looks largely at um, one cyber, it's, it's a conference. So it's a conference or a psychon. A psychon is a cyber conference. It's a cyber conference or cyber psychon um, that looks at incident response. And it's the largest incident response conference currently in Africa. So it looks at how we respond if there are cyber intrusions, criminal activities, malicious activities, how we have to respond and things like that. It brings in investigators. How should investigators respond? In other words, what laws should they use? How should they approach? Now, mind you, why is it important that we have a conversation of this kind? We need it because cyber is a transnational activity. So you need to have conversations with other countries. You need to have partnerships with other countries. The infrastructure for um, especially when you are doing investigation, might rely maybe in a country like Estonia, or might be in a country like Azerbaijan, might be in the United States, in Israel. So how are you going to approach your investigation? Because your normal investigations were normally territorial, but this is a territorial activity now. Right. And therefore, it's important that because it has that dimension, the national discussion is oh. important, but the regional and international discussions are, and the international laws, the international rules about this, they ought to be known. And because it's new, there's a genuine felt inadequacy about what to do, how do we do this, how do we do this. Apart from that, there's conversation needed between those who are into forensics, for example, and those who are into law enforcement, and those who create the laws. And then all those kinds of so, things come so, in. So let me ask you. Right. If, if Ghana, you said Ghana is number three. Is it, uh, in the rankings, yes. In the rankings in sub-region? Right. Or Not in the sub-region, the whole continent. In Africa. In Africa. So Ghana yes. is number three in Africa. Right. The number three, you mentioned the infrastructure, the laws, our, our laws or uh, studies that we've done. Okay, Annie, so let me just go straight to the point. I, I'm, so, I, I'm, I'm just trying to come to a point. Okay. So is it just the laws that we have no, no, tried not structuring? Or because when, anytime you structure a law, you're also looking at the outcome, the benefits, Perfect. Perfect. how we've been able to implement it. Perfect. So I'm looking at, okay, I'm thinking when you were giving me the accounts. So from last year, what have, been, have we been able to do in terms of advancing uh, cyber crime battle in the country? Oh, okay. So, so, so when you are looking at this kind of like the ITU rankings, which is of significance to our country, as to other countries also, one is the legislation. Mm -hmm. Two is the organizational framework. Mm -hmm. So what is the nature of cyber governance in Ghana, for example, or in other countries? In some countries, they are in disarray, or in some countries, they have no laws. So for example, when I say they have no laws, we're dealing, for example, with digital currency. We're dealing, for example, with fintech issues. We're yeah. dealing for blockchain, AI. These are novel technologies. So in many countries, not a single drop of legislation is even festering through. Okay. And yet the criminal activity is not waiting for the country to get itself in good shape because the gaps are useful. Now the, the gaps are useful to criminals because without having substantive legislation, it is difficult to do prosecution. Mm -hmm. What law are you going to charge them with? And 
the inadequacies in the law is what lawyers look out for, right. so that they can be able to distinguish why you cannot trans, you cannot charge a person with a particular offence. Now, in the, you've also asked a, a seminal question about. So we have had the laws. What has been the consequential issues? So we've had the laws, yes, and what has happened has been uh, derivative policies out of the law. So, for example, the law. Um, under Section 35.2 talks about CIIs, Critical Information um, Infrastructure. Now, these are national infrastructure that we ought to protect. Good example, the financial sector. So you look at Bank of Ghana today, Bank of Ghana has come out with very important policy issues that governs bank. All banks should have um, SOCs, uh, security operational centers. Banks should, on financial art and, and other um, critical information infrastructure, according to our law, have to come under sectorial sets, national sets, and so on and so forth. So these things have created, and these things have come into existence. In the past, we didn't have a set. A set is a computer emergency response team. We didn't have sets that were legally, um, I mean, you had laws back in them. So we created the set, but there wasn't any mandatory law you know, back in these things. Now it is part of the legal architecture that you should have. So if you're a financial institution and you don't have a SOC, a security operational center, then you know where you can answer the question yourself. That is certain. But I know, and apart from that one too, there was also the aptitude of, of Liz Affair. So because it wasn't law, entities that need to protect the public, protect themselves and their systems, can opt that, oh, we will not do this or we will do this. Now it's a law. So there is compulsion. Yeah. You have to, because they have criminal consequences if you don't. The question of whether, so what has happened and all those is also a question that the public needs. And that's why the public affairs issues like this are essential, because then people know that, oh, there's a law now. So there are consequences for situational breaches and things like that. You, you get what I'm saying? And it's the people in the country and their level of education, understanding about these things, that helps to move our processes oh, But why do we uh, always uh, relax so much until there's a conference coming up? Well, the point, is that, the point is that nobody is relaxing. Because I mean, it's not, for example, I, I was also thinking that do we, we have these, these laws and we are definitely getting into the digital... Age. Age, yes. Yesterday, I heard one headline saying that children shouldn't be on a screen for more than an hour. Oh, okay. And I was thinking along, okay, what are the consequences if they stay on for more than an for hour than and all an that? Hour. So, as you were speaking, I was thinking, if this is what we have, we are number three, and so what? Do we have it in the schools? Uh, are we teaching children about digital world, yes, cyber crime? Yes. What exactly is yes. going so, on? So it means a lot. It means a lot. And you won't be number three. If you were in school of 54 people, you right. will not be in number three position and it would be and so what. Right. It's, there are consequences. Yeah. It means that you've been doing the right thing. So on the positive, I mean, rather than look at it from mm -hmm. a skeptical perspective, from the positive angle, it means the country has been doing what is right. So what are some of the things that it's been doing what... Right. Yeah, so, that's, that's so, exactly what I'm asking. So, it's so, not like I'm being pessimistic. No, 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 no. So, so if you look at what you are talking about, it's awareness creation. So the conferences are useful because the technical people need conversations with other people. I'm, I'm not questioning the conference. I'm, I'm asking why do we always wait until there's a conference and, okay, we have to raise awareness as a conference. I, 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 I do not think that there's any waiting. That's where I'm coming from. I maybe from the space that I set see a lot of activity being done by various ministries. I see some done by defense. I see some done by national security. So cybersecurity must concern. I see some by your friends, your colleagues in the media. I see some being done by schools, cyber clubs, and things like that. I see some being done by parents, parent-teacher associations, raising the issues about, about um, digitization and its effects in different schools. You know, Apart from that one also, it's a process and a journey. And so there's a sense in which there are punctuation marks. There are points where, or points of inflections where we gather to uh, take fresh anointing and move ahead. And there's a point at which we gather to also um, take some baptism of fire from people who know more in other countries. Now, Israel, for example, is a global leader in cyber. It pays to then for Ghana, which is number three, aiming to be number two and number one to then be positioning itself, for example, as a cyber hub for Africa. Because if you look for the World Peace Index, even though we live today in a troubled world, yet Ghana is rated in sub-Saharan context as number two, for example, after Mauritius. 
So it's, um, you, you ask a very relevant question, why do we wait? In my view, we have not been waiting. Otherwise, we will never become number three. We've, we've moved at a dizzy pace. That dazes a lot of, so why is other countries, South Africa, they're there? Why is Kenya, they're there? Why are they not number three? Why are they not, why are we number three? So it tells you that a lot of, and if you go to, for example, Ghana, let me give you an example. Way back in 2015, do you know the mobile internet penetration rate? Was 115.4%. The average in Africa is 38% today. The average in Africa for mobile penetration, that is it. And if you look at Ghana, even last year, the data will tell you that we were 138% uh, 130, so that, that's a dizzy pace. If you look at uh, fintech matters, that is financial technology matters, you will see that World Bank has ranked Ghana as Africa's leader in mobile money. In fact, Africa itself is a global superpower when it comes to mobile money transfer. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not using banks, they are using um, mm -hmm. um, phones to keep money, to transfer money, to store money. The reason why security of sex transactions, the digital economy is so important. So we have not been staying still. Ports have not stayed still. Paperless ports. There might be problems, but the, the, the uh, address systems in the country have changed. Uh, people voting might change because people have now got um, digital IDs and things like that. We have a double self now. Mm. You have your physical self, you have a digitized self and all those things. So all those kinds of things are, Ghanaians are doing NFTs. Artists are selling NFTs in the millions. In fact, one of the biggest artists that we have in our country, are not our old artists, are modern artists who are doing digital art. You understand? So there's a sense in which, like I said, conferences like this mm. allow the policy makers to sit down and understand where the, the world is moving to. Otherwise, you're doing, busy doing like good work here. But these conversations are healthy because for those who want to know or those who lead our country, they must be at the front edge, cutting edge. In the United States, conferences are held every blessed day mm. on something. Conversations are held. The media is invited to amplify these things. And so the state of awareness in those countries is up there. Ghana is a developing country, but it is doing what its might and punching above its might. I think so. In fact, I've been, I was at the World Expo, for example, and I've been at the other places, and I've seen how other countries have looked at Ghana with a lot of interest. If you look at what we're doing, for example, at Cyberg, so it's, you have... The, those like an SGI. SGI is Security Governance Initiative Secretariat. We are interested in this governance system. We are interested in how we propagate cyber awareness and cyber capacity building within the security sector ecosystem. There are others, I mean, that come. And we, 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 we partner the conference because the object of the conference, which is um, to show digital solutions, uh, to show um, um, new ideas and how we should go about them, for example, in investigation. You know. So if somebody were doing cryptocurrency trading and we wanted to do an investigation, how do we do it? These are new areas the world is moving into. And you know as much as I do that a lot of companies have been set up that are doing all these kinds of things. We need to understand the state of the, 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 or the ecosystem now. Let me just chip this one in. Why are we not into cryptocurrency business? Is it that we don't have the capacity to monitor uh, <laughs> the activities? Or because, I mean, yeah. some countries within the sub-region have already... Uh. I think, that, I think that in the fullness of time, I mean, the, at least we'll get some clarity about it, but the Bank of Ghana needs to trade like, the way, like the way it is trading, at least okay. ensure that you, you, you put in the right mechanisms. Okay. And the fact that somebody else is doing it is no good reason to stampede your own economy into it, because we do know of also MLA, money laundering, you understand, and also the fact that some of these are also potential areas for criminality. In other words, I mean, like, all the digital technologies that we have seen have got the pluses, but we have also seen stupendous problems with them. Right. And this, those of us in security sleep less because of that. And so it is important that you don't just get, you have to have 
wise stakeholder consultations, training, and things like that. And they feel that if that has not adequately been done, then perhaps the country should do it when it is best suited to do. Right. And I think that that is a good approach. Right, right. Yes. Let, let's talk about the conference coming up. Okay, great. Okay, so when, how, who good. are we expecting? Perfect. What, what so, so, so this expected? conference is coming up, uh, up in October, October 20th to 22nd. Oh, so it's a three-day conference. Okay. I yes. It was in and of course, I mean, around the world and in many countries, including Ghana, October has adaptively become a, a cyber conversation month. Yes. So it's a very good time to have this kind of. It also happens to be a time where, like I said, for us at SGI, it is the SGI week. So SGI week is normally in either October or November. Mm -hmm. And this year, like last year, it is in October. <laughs> So who, who, who are coming? The people who are coming, so the, you have... Are so, the objectives as well different? Yeah, so, so yes. So who are coming first? Perfect. Definitely. So those who are coming, uh, so we have Ghanaians, definitely. You have the participants from the U.S. You have those from Israel. You have those from Kenya. We have those from South Africa. You have those from the United Kingdom. So you have a very broad specter of audience that um, is coming. Last year, we had people from Liberia and Nigeria, and that's a good thing because they are within our neighborhood. Right. And there are people that, and we have attended programs also with them, so it's a very good thing that we're seeing uh, they having an interest. Nigeria is also an SGI country. So there's- Is it a matter of we invited them or they- Oh, they heard about it. They heard, I mean, we, want, we, 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 we always look at their kids and see what others are doing yeah. and invite them. Sometimes they even send um, um, inquiries to find out whether there's any program in Ghana, because Ghana is deeply respected in many regards, and they want to find out whether there's a program that is being organized in this area or that area, you know. And particularly because CyberX has become the largest uh, conference on IR, incident response. Okay. If something happens, what do we do kind of thing. Oh. It's attracted a lot of attention. And whilst working at it, I may be, well, I was, I'm the chairman for it. So, so whilst working on the planning committee, one of the things that we wanted to do was what like London has done with the security expo and what Germany has done with it. So it's, a, it's something that began small, has become something that is global. And people go to the International Security Expo, people go to the Munich Security Conference, the whole world goes to Davos. We want to see the world also come to Ghana on account of one, we're not discussing only cyber, we're discussing homeland security matters. Okay. So for example, things to do with national security strategy development, which is one of the new things on the African continent today, that countries must have national security strategies. And you would realize that shortly, just a few, I think in 2020, Ghana launched its national security strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, at this conference also, one of the things which is interesting for us is the national integrated maritime strategy. So this is something that we have been working at, and uh, hopefully in a not too distant future, we're going to see the president launch. It has to do with maritime security and things like that. So it's- So we've got things to show off. We've got things to show off, and things that others want to learn from, and things that we need to also keep learning from other countries. I mean, if, for example, if you have, you're lucky to have the Kenyans here. The Kenyans have vast experience in terrorism. They have vast experience in maritime security. They have vast experience in, it's important for Africa to have internal conversation not to be discussing things only with other parts of the world, Europe, US, but Africa to have its own conversations. And because of the changes that have occurred in security, I mean, you can, now you can see a lot of like security governance. So we, we can't have security governance without conversation. Right. You can't have security governance without participation. You can't have security governance without inclusivity. And so it is that today you find some, I mean, you find national security as a whole department of security governance that engages with other entities and then advances Ghana's uh, vital interest. We have vital interest in our region. We have vital interest in our region. And it's important that we build an ecosystem that is respected, that allows us to take advantage of these things. Uh, let me just throw this. We're talking right. about digital security, but in terms of human security, um, this issue has been on the table for some days now where, right. uh, for example, the like, likes of members of parliament will go into their constituencies and they are attacked. And, and the, the recent one we saw was quite a little scary because the constituents had weapons with them, clubs, cajoles, cutlasses, and things. So uh, in terms of human security, does it come to the national security? Because this has to do with leaders uh, whom we normally assign 
police officers too to give them, you know, absolute security? Has it come to you? Oh, of course. I mean, all manner of things that affect our country at a certain national level of interest to us, they do come. And um, I mean, you, you, you don't have 100% security anywhere in the world. Right. And therefore, sometimes, despite your best planning, you still see one or two, you see Humpty Dumpty would fall a little bit. So, I mean, even the almighty America, the superpowers, we see those kinds of things occasionally happen. So I would say that, I mean, those are things that are incidental occurrences. I mean, the, and we take both preemptive measures to store on a daily basis a lot more than you are seeing. I mean, the, the security agencies spend their time trying to have advanced foreknowledge about events like that and trying to store them. Some slip through the cracks and things like that. I mean, so, so I, I would say that those are occurrences that slip through the crack. There are a lot more that um, it would have slipped if it hadn't been for the vigilance of our security. I mean, we live in a, a region of so much terrorism. Look at what has happened to other countries. And yet, with all these ones, it is not only the prayer that is supporting Ghana. Prayer is important. But prayer without work is as, as, as void as, poss as one can think about it. So kudos to our security sector people that in spite of all challenges around the world within their region, at least have kept our country in very good state. I mean, the more reason why we should be meeting to converse a lot more how we can do. And that's why CyberX 2022 is It's important. We're, 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 we're done. We're done. But give us a final words on CyberX. So I would say that the um, conference and exhibition invites solution providers in the technical field, in the maritime field, in the aviation field, and those also in the fintech space, because these are all areas that concern our general welfare and security and the kind of life that we in Ghanaians want to have. And it's important that they come to the conference. So I make take this opportunity. Everybody can come. Yes, everybody can come. The media, you can come to cover it. And also our neighbors also. I mean, your um, station goes far. Right. And so I believe that, how do you call it, as I, we reach out to the world and ask them to come to Ghana, you understand, to experience and to think through security measures for our continent and our countries, I think is the best place to be in October. Right. Right, so that's uh, uh, Osei Bonso Dixon Esquire, Chairman for CyberX, CyberX Africa. He's also uh, the Director for Security Governance Initiative at the National yeah. Security. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so for much. For making time with us. This has been Good Afternoon Ghana, and uh, that's it for the week. Thank you for joining us. We're back next week with some more uh, discussion about the nation. So CyberX Africa, when the time is due, we'll update you, and then you make time with our conference.